Deserts are an extreme biome. The biome experiences extreme temperatures as well as extreme dryness. It's one of the toughest biomes on earth for animals and plants to survive within. The few species that have managed to survive here have incredible and unique adaptations that have allowed them to withstand the extreme conditions. There are four main classes of deserts on earth, true or arid deserts, semi-arid deserts, coastal deserts and cold deserts. The desert biome in general is found on every continent on earth except Europe. Life in true deserts is very tough. Temperatures here are warmer than semi-arid deserts and precipitation levels are lower. Precipitation levels of less than 20 centimeters per year are classified as true deserts. Semi-arid deserts have precipitation levels between 20 and 40 centimeters. Coastal deserts are usually found along the coast of continents, such as the Nabib Desert. Cold deserts have equal levels of precipitation as true deserts, but as the name suggests, they are cold and occur at high latitudes away from the equator. Deserts are a hugely important biome on Earth. Around one third of Earth's land surface is made up of deserts. The largest desert on Earth is the Sahara, that stretches over 3.5 million square miles across the northern part of Africa. The smallest is the Karkos Desert in Yukon, Canada, at one square mile. Other deserts on Earth include the Mojave Desert in the US, Gobi, Tar, Atacama and the Great Victoria Desert in Australia. True deserts are formed by patterns in the atmospheric circulation. Due to the Earth's tilt, sunlight is more concentrated at the equator than at the poles. It's important to note that warm air is better at holding moisture than cold air. At the equator, warm, moist air rises, expands and then cools as it moves to higher altitudes. The moisture is then released back down onto the equator, hence why tropical rainforests tend to form around the equator. The moistureless air then moves polewards to latitudes of 30 degrees south and 30 degrees north. Regions of high pressure cause cool air to drop its moistureless air over these regions. As the air has no moisture, no precipitation is dropped, creating a landscape lacking in precipitation. These regions of high pressure repeat every 60 degrees. Deserts can also form through another process known as a rain shadow effect. This is where a region of low precipitation forms on the leeward or wind protected side of a mountain range. This is usually the side furthest away from the ocean. On the ocean side of the mountain range, the water rises in the form of water vapour. The vapour forms part of the air mass over the ocean and the prevailing wind moves a packet of air towards the mountain range. The packet rises up the windward side of the mountains as there is less atmospheric pressure to keep it down. Due to the drop in pressure, the packet expands and cools. The stored water vapour condenses to form clouds. Ice crystals or water molecules can form, leading to precipitation in the form of snow and rain falling. This creates a productive and moist windward side. However, as the cooled packet moves over the peaks, there is more pressure which condenses it and warms it. As there is far less water vapour within it than before, the outcome is a very dry and moistureless leeward side. For example, the Death Valley in the US is within the rain shadow of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. When most people think of deserts, their mind goes to the true deserts. Most of the world's true deserts are located along two belts, 30 degrees north and south in latitude. Sandstorms, droughts and intense heat are regular occurrences here, which makes life very challenging for species to survive here. Precipitation levels as low as these aren't seen in any other biome on Earth. True deserts experience the greatest diurnal temperature variation. The sun's heat is a huge factor in the high temperatures seen here. Thus, once night comes and the sun has set, the main contributor of heat here has been lost, and the temperatures plummet, causing night times to be relatively cold compared with daytime temperatures. This huge change in temperature between day and night presents another difficult challenge for the plants and animals trying to survive in this biome. The wet season brings a short spell of relief to the landscape, which can now recover from the brutal and intense conditions. When it rains here, it rains for sure. All the annual precipitation seen in this biome falls between this brief spell. The Sahara Desert, as I mentioned before, spans 9.1 million square kilometers across African countries such as Morocco, Egypt, Niger, Chad and Sudan. The Atlas Mountains provide a spectacular backdrop to the huge sand dunes and extensive salt flats. The largest North American desert is the Chihuahuan Desert covering 450,000 square kilometers. It covers northwestern Mexico, as well as New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas. The Big Bend National Park that's found here 
has the highest number of bird species out of any US national park. Rattlesnakes, cacti and chihuahuan flax are some organisms found here. The Great Australian Desert, covering an incredible 2.3 million kilometres squared, comprises five separate deserts merged together. Great Sandy, Victoria, Simpson, Gibson and Sturt. These deserts together make up one third of the continent of Australia. Flora species here include acacia, eucalyptus, saltbush and spinifex grass. Fauna here include dingoes, kangaroos, rabbit-eared bandicoots, blue-tongued lizards and fat-tailed moles. As the name suggests, semi-arid deserts experience greater levels of precipitation than arid or true deserts. Semi-arid deserts are usually found between true deserts and surrounding biomes that experience more rainfall such as savannas or forests. They act as a transitional habitat between the dry deserts and the wetter surrounding landscapes. Cold deserts are usually undermined as a biome with most people associating deserts with extreme heat. However, deserts such as the Gobi prove that this is not the case. There is often a lot of subjectivity when it comes to deciding which regions on earth are from which biome. This is an issue particularly in the desert biome. There is a thin line between the tundra environment and the cold deserts. The tundra biome tends to receive more precipitation in the form of snow than cold deserts and thus is sometimes not classified as a desert. However, this isn't the biggest issue. True tundra is considered to be only north. So where does this leave Antarctica, a continent with low levels of precipitation and extreme low temperatures? Surely this makes it a cold desert? Well, some say yes and others don't. Antarctica is often referred to as just permanent ice cover, much like Greenland. Technically, based on the true definition of a desert, these two giant land masses qualify as cold deserts. Antarctica and Greenland are two of the largest deserts on our planet. Three quarters of Greenland is home to the second largest permanent ice sheet on Earth. The largest permanent ice sheet on Earth, though, is Antarctica, a remote wilderness consisting of nothing but snow and ice. Not many species of plants and all animals can survive in the core regions of the Antarctic or Greenland deserts. The Gobi Desert, spanning 1.2 million kilometres squared, covers parts of north and northeastern China as well as south Mongolia. It's another massive desert that can see temperatures plummet to minus 40 degrees Celsius in the winter. The spring months here are also cold and dry, followed by a relatively warm summer, with temperatures possibly reaching up to 35 degrees Celsius. The Gobi Desert was formed by the rain shadow effect, where the Tibetan Plateau created a barrier from the Indian Ocean, causing dry air to drop on the other side. Typical fauna within this Asian region include yak and snow leopards. In North America, the Great Basin Desert is a temperate desert created again by the rain shadow effect of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. In the winter, the weather can be extremely cold and snowy. Also, this desert is famous for its numerous salt flats as well as being home to the Great Salt Lake. Common fauna within this region include bighorn sheep, pronghorn antelope, jackrabbit and pocket mouse. In South America, the Atacama Desert spanning 140,000 km squared lies on the coast of Peru and Chile in the foothills of the Andes. It is one of the most arid areas on earth and it's made up of vast sand dunes. Common fauna here includes lizards, llamas and Peruvian foxes. A common denominator between most cold deserts is the lack of precipitation in the form of rainfall. The majority of the precipitation comes in the form of snow or fog, which again for many plants and animals can be hard to absorb a lot of water from, but at least it still provides some. Coastal deserts is just a term used to describe the location of the deserts as opposed to the climate. Coastal deserts can be cold or hot and semi-arid or arid. Examples of coastal deserts include the Atacama Desert on the western side of South America and the Nabib Desert on the western side of Africa. Most of the precipitation of coastal deserts is in the form of fog as opposed to rain. The Nabib Desert in particular has an average less than 12 millimetres of rain per year. There are some huge issues which animals need to overcome if they are to survive in this biome. Temperatures, depending on the latitude, can be extremely cold or extremely warm, or even both if it's night time. Water is an essential part of survival, as it's used in many chemical processes, such as respiration, use and excretion of toxic substances, and maintaining bodily fluids. As you may have already guessed, the water supply is scarce here. Some animals are able to obtain water without drinking at all. Instead, they obtain all the water they need from their food. 
Some obtain the moisture from the food, whilst others use this food to produce metabolic water, which is created by chemical reactions when energy in the food is released. A good saying for the desert region is, if you can't gain water, don't lose it. Some species are excellent at water conservation. Retaining water here is the utmost priority of animals. To put this in perspective, us humans cannot lose a fifth of our body water, otherwise we will die. Camels can also consume 50 litres of water in a few minutes. This water doesn't have to be completely fresh either. They have a high salt tolerance and can even absorb saline water. Some species have to consume water daily, and so migrating far to find a water source can be risky. However, for others, they can last days or weeks without water. One example is the extraordinary desert tortoise, which is one of the most resilient species on our planet. Found in the Mojave Desert, it can cope with temperatures up to 50 degrees Celsius and survive with no water for up to a year. Yes, up to a year. For some species, water conservation is not always within their control. The kangaroo rat uses an extortionate 73% of water through its skin and by breathing. Sandgrass birds transport water to each other through their feathers. In coastal deserts, there can be a build-up of fog. However, this fog is too small to be converted into water for most species. Darkling beetles in the Namib desert condense the fog into its abdomen and form water of which it can absorb. The fennec fox, which is the smallest member of the dog family, survives in the Sahel and Sahara regions in Africa. It has massive appendages which help to increase its surface area to volume ratio, helping to lose heat more easily. Due to the unpredictability of the food supply, animals are never certain when their next meal will come. Therefore, they are able to store food both inside and outside of their body. Animals such as the North American kangaroo rat construct underground holes that can hold up to 5 kilograms of seeds. For larger animals that consume large vegetation such as shrubs, this method isn't feasible. Instead, they consume as much as possible and store it within their bodies in the form of fat stores. Camels are great examples of this. Surprisingly, other species such as the gila monster and fat-tailed dunnart store food within their tails. The next big issue facing these animals in true deserts is the heat. In high temperatures, humans lose heat by sweating. This is efficient and we can lose up to a litre of water per hour. A desert animal cannot afford to lose this much water this quickly. There are two ways that animals address this issue. Some have light coloured skin or fur which helps to reduce the amount of heat absorbed, therefore reducing the need to sweat. Also, a more efficient adaptation is for animals to become nocturnal, meaning they can avoid the high temperatures during the day and come out at night when the temperatures are cooler. An even more extreme scenario for some is undergoing astivation. This is a state of dormancy which occurs during a hot or dry period. They seek shelter and their body temperature, metabolic and energy levels all drop. Cold-blooded animals have body temperatures that fluctuate with the external surroundings and don't have the homeostasis mechanism that many warm-blooded animals have where they are able to maintain optimum internal conditions regardless of changes in their external surroundings. Reptiles like lizards and snakes are cold-blooded and because outside temperatures can be so high, they often have to sit out in the shade. A behavioural adaptation to the heat by wallabies and kangaroos is to lick their front legs, which covers them with saliva to help cool them down. Who thought birds could pant? Well, actually, they can. This is a remarkable adaptation to the heat. They have small flaps of skin over their throats, which flutter to help lose heat. The intense high temperature is not the only factor that animals need to adapt to here. In high latitude regions such as the Gobi Desert or Great Basin Desert of North America, temperatures can be extremely cold in the winter and at night. Mammals grow thick fur or seek shelter underground to avoid freezing to death. Birds tend to migrate to warmer climates during the winter. Reptiles go through the winter hibernating to conserve heat and energy. The regularity of breeding in this biome is largely determined by the food and water supplies and not a regular cycle that occurs irrespective of other important factors. They have highly variable breeding seasons. Female kangaroos give birth extremely regularly when food is plentiful. However, if food levels drop, then the individuals will put a pause in breeding because they recognise that without food, there simply won't be any chance of survival for themselves, let alone their young. The sand for large mammals can be difficult and they can often get stuck in it. Animals such as camels have adapted by having extra large feet which help to spread their body weight over the surface of the sand and increase their stability. Not only can the sand be painful for the animals to step on, but especially during sandstorms, it can be really uncomfortable for their eyes. 
Animals such as camels have long eyelashes which help to block the sound from entering their eyes. Having long legs also helps to keep the body away from the surface where the heat is most intense. Similarly with animals, only certain plants can survive in this biome. A lot of the plants here are endemic to the desert biome. Sunlight is plentiful and carbon dioxide is plentiful. The limiting factor for plant growth is water in this biome. If there was an abundant amount of water like the rainforest, then plant life too would be diverse and abundant. The plants that are able to survive here have efficient ways of collecting and conserving water. They have large shallow roots which drain and draw as much water as possible from the surrounding land. The large span of roots sucking up what water is in the soil makes it difficult for many plants to survive in close proximity because of the low levels of water. Cacti, succulents are some of the dominating plant species here. They contain storage tissues which hold onto the water and act as reserves. Many plants such as cacti contain spikes or release harmful chemicals to deter animals trying to capture their supply. Plants have pores called stomata on their leaves which open and close to allow the diffusion of gases to aid the process of gases exchange. The stomata here open at night which helps to reduce evaporation rates because the air is cooler. They use the CO2 they absorb at night and then use it for photosynthesis during the day. The largest desert bird is the flightless ostrich which can be found in Arabia, Australia and Africa. The most poisonous scorpion species in the world, the death stalker, is found in deserts. Its venom is strong enough to kill a human. Typical fauna in true deserts include fennec foxes, fawny devils, ostrich, greater roadrunner, adax antelope, rattlesnakes, coyotes, iguanas, camels, donkeys, tarantulas, meerkats, Egyptian vultures and bald eagles are fauna associated with this biome. Common flora associated with the desert biome includes elephant trees, prickly pears, aloe vera, joshua trees, sedges, greasewood, sagebrush and bunch grass. There are usually two peaks of flowering and fruiting during the year, one for annuals and one for perennials. Seeds here are typically dispersed by winds. The annual plants in this biome spend most of the year in the soil as a seed. These seeds can tolerate the heat and once rain is detected they germinate and get pollinated. The irrigation of land used for agriculture, such as the surface runoff of nutrients into water supplies, can cause salt levels to increase to levels that are too intolerable for plants to take up. Many deserts contain high levels of oil, coal and other substances that humans utilise. Big corporations flock to the deserts and set up large equipments to help extract the soil from below the surface. This is damaging the ecosystem above land and can cause many animal species to become frightened or panicked. Deserts are also used for tourism activities such as quad biking and camel riding. Exploiting these incredible animals for commercial purposes is a cruel act and they should be left to themselves out in nature. Carrying large amounts of equipment as well as people can be severely damaging to them. According to National Geographic, the desert's biome once occupied nearly 30 million square kilometres in 1993, whereas now the biome occupies around 8 million square kilometres, with only 1 million square kilometres or so protected. Thanks for watching our video on the incredible desert biome. If you did enjoy it, it would be great if you'd give us a like and subscribe to see more nature content.